is this 2023's best fitness tracker? Huawei Band 8 seems to have it all, but is it really that good? Let's inspect! Everybody, really nice to meet you here on the channel. If you like the idea about inspecting cool tech, maybe you want to subscribe and I invite you to stay for another few minutes to see if you're going to like the content we propose over here. Today, another deep dive into the world of fitness tracker, exploring the latest coming from Huawei. It's called the Band 8, a brand new release for 2023. And today, besides the thorough inspection and the cycle of testings I usually apply on such kind of devices, there's an important announcement I want to make so that you better understand the reasons about particular decisions I'm about to take. But before that, plenty of work to be done, so let's go! As usual, Huawei have launched Band 8 in most regions, except for the United States. Price here in Europe is around 60 bucks, but if you want to save some money, you may think of ordering the Chinese edition, which may cost you almost twice less online and has the very same hardware and almost the very same software. Of course, the big rival remains Xiaomi Smart Band 8, but there are of course a bunch of models from various other brands that actually can be competitive. The unboxing reveals quite a basic pack. The design of the cardboard may vary in different regions, but content inside is gonna be about the same. Here's the Huawei Band 8, not much different to the 7th generation. It retains the same shape and style since a few years already. There's a magnetic charging cable included, as well as a user guide and some more papers. Since we conclude that the design feels familiar, there aren't too many changes visible indeed. The display has a rectangular form, there continues to be a physical button on the side, a nice strap with a buckle which can easily be removed from the band in case you want to switch to another style or color. This happens to be among the key strengths of Huawei Band 8, especially when compared to Xiaomi Smart Band 8 which continues to rely on buttoning and many people report how unreliable it may be in certain conditions. Most of the health tracking sensors are here at the bottom side. If you want to also get to know the details about the specs, the display is 1.47 inches, AMOLED, up to 500 nits peak brightness, there's a 6-axis gyroscope and accelerometer, optical HR sensor, the band is waterproof, supports Bluetooth 5, has a 180mAh battery which can last for weeks, and without the strap, it weighs only 14 grams. Operating system is Harmony OS. Based on the specifications, this sounds like a very promising fitness tracker. But if we dig deeper and compare to the predecessing generation or some other fitness trackers, there are some alarming facts. So it's true, we have a new sensor about blood oxygen saturation. The device is overall a little thinner as compared to Band 7 and supports five more workouts. And so far, that's everything I can discover a bit alarming, especially knowing the fact that they didn't include some of the most wanted features, like there is no GPS, which okay, we understand Huawei because they don't want to cannibalize the sales of their smartwatches, but they don't even bring ambient light sensor, which is a big deal, meaning that you don't have auto brightness with this fitness tracker. And biggest competitor, Xiaomi Smart Band 8, already supports it. So based on everything I've said so far, probably you can understand I'm not really impressed with the hardware, so maybe we should take a closer look at the software. To control your fitness tracker, it's mostly down to taps and swipes, and of course the physical button. It continues to be one of my favorite features, but at the same time, the touch-based controls only, like the solution with Xiaomi Smart Band 8, have already become good enough to make these buttons obsolete. Swipe up for the notifications. That's a nice one. You can see different apps icons. You can read and you can respond via any of the predefined answers. Excellent so far. If you swipe down, there's the area with the quick toggles, also customizable. Swiping left and right is showing the main cards, but it doesn't loop and once you reach the end, that's it. You can rearrange the order, but you can't add new cards. This already is a little frustrating, especially knowing how much more customizable the MIUI for wearables has become recently. 
In terms of apps, you're gonna find the usual suspects. Starting with the workout section, this time up to 100 tracked sports are present. Then we have the workout records, the different health tracking sections like the 24-7 HR tracking, the all-day-long SpO2 tracking, sleep cycles, stress, it's all there. You can rely on certain productivity tools like a stopwatch or countdown timer, but a calendar app or integration continues to be missing. While a year or two ago we could have ignored this fact, I feel that a calendar feature is a must-have for every 2023 device. Not sure whether Huawei is going to bring it anytime soon, it took them around three years to integrate Strava, so hold your horses. If you're interested in accuracy, let's take a look at some of the measurements. Heart rate tracking is quite good, my usual training cycles are within the measured values, and it's good at catching sudden HR spikes, which is exactly what we want to see. But oxygen saturation measuring is also correct, there's a new sensor about it. Steps counting is reliable, but the distance calculations are somewhat off. The best way to track sports is to have your smartphone around so that Huawei Band 8 can use the GPS signal from the phone and produce a lot more accurate graph and calculate the pace in a more reliable way. But if workouts like outdoor running are your top priority, I'd seriously consider buying a watch with an inbuilt GPS so that you don't have to carry another 200 gram device all the time. What you're really gonna love is the battery life. It continues to be amazing with up to 14 days per charge and with some smart optimizations you can span this up to 3 weeks. With always on display it's gonna be significantly less though. In my case, with all the tracking features on, the AOD function on during some of the days and occasional sports, around a week is possible. The smartphone app for controlling is called Huawei Health, continues to be among my favorite smartphone apps for wearable devices, clean interface, a lot of information well assessed, tiles that you can rearrange and customize and of course analyze your own health and habits, plus getting to see some more good ideas about how you can improve your health and overall life quality. I can assure you that for some people such kind of process data is a huge motivator. Here are some examples. This is how a summary of a workout looks like. And here's another example with GPS signal borrowed from the phone. You can explore a lot more, like sleep tracking, which is very detailed, covers deep and light sleep and also REM. And very good graph about the heart rate tracking. In terms of configuration, whatever we could do for Huawei Band 6 and 7 is doable for Band 8, but not much more than that, and it's kind of disappointing to see that the software development is being stuck somewhere in 2020 or 2021, because new features are literally missing with exception for a few tiny things. Always on display, for instance, cannot be enabled from the Huawei Health app yet. You have to configure it from the band itself, and on top, there continues to be no way to schedule the AOD feature already two years after the release of Harmony OS. Plus, there continue to be too few settings configuration items. Since it already feels as if we are talking about drawbacks, let's carry on and note down the limited configuration options, the lack of easy Google Feed integration, the outdated in some areas user interface, and generally, the lack of significant upgrades both on hardware and software levels. In the end, I want to be very clear about something. This fitness tracker is very reliable and great about the health tracking that it does. So uh, I can totally recommend it for being quite a good value. But in terms of hardware and overall features, it doesn't offer much more than Band 6 or Band 7, which have been released a couple of years ago and last year respectively. Meaning that if you own any of these generations, I can't find any good reasons to convince you to jump to the Huawei Band 8. Furthermore, the software is kind of stuck for the past 2-3 years. You barely see new enhancements and important features such as integration of a calendar is not present yet. Now, the announcement I wanted to make... Uh, it's in regard to this kind of devices and Band 8 is among the last Huawei devices I'll probably cover on the channel, at least up until I see a difference in the way business is being done in certain regions because I found some quite alarming things. 
probably there's going to be a review of the next generation of the Huawei Watch GT series, but I don't really know whether I'm going to cover anything more than that. Still, if you have a question related to a Huawei product, something else, I'll be happy to discuss. And of course, it's something I can reassess in the future. That's been everything about today's episode. I hope it makes good sense and you learned everything you wanted to about uh, Huawei Band 8. In case of questions, you know how to reach out. In case you want to buy it, there's a link in the video description area. And should you want to support the channel, find a way. Like and subscribe is the easiest and free of charge way. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye!